the speed of light was never measured in only one direction. That is a very well known fact. The only way to measure the speed of light is to take an average over a round trip. And one of the postulates of Einstein's special theory of relativity tells us that the speed of light is always one particular number in every frame of reference. This means that it shouldn't matter whether the light is moving to the left or to the right direction. We should measure the same speed in both directions. But if we can't measure the speed of light in just one direction, how can physicists still consider this theory being correct? And moreover, they even build the entire modern physics on its background. So the stakes are really, really high. So what is the problem? Why can't we measure one-way speed of light? To measure a one-way speed of light, we need two spatially separated clocks that are in sync with each other. Knowing the distance, we can now send a light pulse and observe how long did it take to reach the second clock. And by simple formula, calculate the velocity of that pulse. That would be all nice if we could have two spatially separated clocks that are in sync. The one way how to have two clocks that are in sync is to send an information about the state of the clock 1. Then, by knowing the velocity of the information, we can calculate the time this information was traveling and adjust the second clock to the received information state plus the duration of the traveling signal. But the maximal speed of information is the same as the speed of light. And since it's the speed we want to measure, then we can't use the second step. Is there really not any other way how to synchronize two spatially separated clocks? We could maybe put them at one position and synchronize them first and then move one to a different location. But then the second clock have to move. And since it's moving, then there is time dilation involved. And this time dilation depends on the velocity. But maybe if we knew how it depends on the velocity, maybe we could somehow avoid this problem. Okay, for now, let's suppose that the speed of light is the same in every direction. If we had two clocks at the same position, we can synchronize them. But if we took one clock and move it 10 light minutes away with the speed of light, then these two clocks would be out of sync by 10 minutes due to extreme time dilation. This is however the extreme case when one clock moves with the speed of light. But what if we make the speed lower? Let's say 0.87c. Then the two clocks will be out of sync by just 5.75 minutes. So it feels like lowering the velocity increases the accuracy of the synchronization. Does it mean that we can make the accuracy arbitrarily precise by just lowering the transport velocity? To find out, we need to do a proper mathematics here. So overall, the difference on the clocks is given by this formula, where t is the duration of the transfer for the stationary clock, and t primed is the duration for transported clock. For every stationary clock, the duration is just simply the distance divided by the velocity. For the transported clock, it is basically the same, but the distance is Lorentz contracted and therefore there is this gamma factor in the denominator. You can check one extreme of this equation, where the transport is done by the speed of light. This second term goes to zero as gamma goes to infinity, and you are left with only the first term. So if the s is 10 light minutes, you have 10 minutes of desynchronization. But what happens if the transport velocity goes to zero? Does it mean that we get two clocks that are synchronized? Well, if you did it naively, you would get infinities in both terms. And subtracting two infinities is something you should never do. Okay, so let's massage this expression a bit. If you do the math, you would eventually end up with this expression. Now, if you did the limit of velocity goes to zero, 
you would get 0 over 0, which is also undefined. To find out the limit behavior as the velocity goes to zero, you have to ask how fast are denominator and denominator converging to zero respectively. To find out how steep is a certain curve, you find its derivative. Now you can compare derivatives instead. This method is called L hospital rule. If you do this, you will eventually end up with expression that looks like this. And now, if you take the limit as velocity goes to zero, you get zero over one, which is zero. Okay, so let's make some realistic examples so that all of this is not so abstract. Imagine two planets, for example, Earth and a Mars, separated by the distance of 50 million kilometers. We have two synchronized clock and we want to slowly transport one to the Mars with a classical velocity of a typical rocket, like 10 kilometers per second. You can use this expression for it, and the result you will get is that the clocks differ by 0.0028 seconds. So unless you are doing very sensitive measurement, you can pretty much neglect this amount. So by moving 10 kilometers a second, you can have two clocks that are nearly perfectly synchronized, despite being separated by several light minutes. And now you can make a test. Is there a difference between clocks synchronized by a light pulse and a slow transported clocks? Such experiments were indeed done, and they showed that these two methods of synchronizations are equivalent. This means that if you do the light pulse or slow transport, you get two identical clocks on Mars. So it feels like we have done it. By slow transport, we can make any two clocks synchronized to arbitrary precision. And now we can compare it to a light pulse synchronization that depends on the anisotropy of the speed of light. So we can pick such a speed of light that fits the slow transport synchronization. And if you do it, you will find out that the classical isotropic speed of light will do the job. But to be perfectly safe, maybe we should check whether a slow transport gives us also perfectly synchronized clocks if the speed of light is anisotropic. Because if it doesn't, then we can't make this trick comparing light pulse synchronization and a slow transport synchronization. So let's do it. The gamma factor for anisotropic speed of light changes a bit. There is this extra factor that depends on the anisotropy factor k, and it runs from minus one to one. If the k is zero, we have isotropic speed of light. So we can do the same trick now. We calculate the time difference with this new gamma factor. And we calculate the limit as the velocity goes to zero by the same method as we did in a previous case. And the result we get is this. Ah, that isn't good, right? We want it to be zero. Now it's linearly dependent on the distance. So even if we are moving very slow, if the distance we are traveling is big, then this time difference will also be pretty big unless this k is zero, which is the isotropic case. So it seems like there is in fact no way to measure a one-way speed of light. And although some experiments are claiming to have done it, it always turned out not to be the case in the end. So back to the original question. Is it problem for special relativity? Well. No, because a theory formulated using anisotropic parameter turns out to be equivalent with special relativity for any anisotropy of the speed of light. But if you want to disprove special relativity, you have to disprove one of its postulates. Special relativity has two postulates, the relativity principle postulate and the light postulate, which tells you that the speed of light is independent of the relative motion of the source. And while we can't measure a one-way speed of light, we can measure a change in one-way speed of light if a certain object 
that radiates changes its velocity. Every experiment trying to find a difference in one-way speed of light depending on the relative motion of the source concluded that there is no difference within the limits of experimental accuracy. So you can't touch this postulate, it's perfectly safe. The other postulate states that the laws of physics must be the same in every reference frame and therefore there should not be an absolute motion. This postulate would have a hard time against something like ether, which would serve as a static medium in which the light moves with a definite velocity. So, if we can't measure the difference in light speed due to the motion of the source, it might be because there is a medium in which light moves always with the same velocity. The same a sound in air, for example. No experiment ever suggested, however, that such a medium actually exists. However, a recent video from the channel Dialect suggests that you can use this anisotropic speed of light by somehow create absolutely stationary space in the entire universe. Since the special relativity is independent on how you choose this anisotropy factor, then all observers can agree on one frame to have the speed of light isotropic and other will adjust the anisotropy factor in such a way that it would match an ether prediction. Well, I don't really know what the author of the video wanted to tell us with this fact. He called it a loophole into special relativity. Even though the fact that every observer can choose his own anisotropy factor isn't new thing, and you can find it even on Wikipedia. But even if you do this, how do you wanna break the principle of relativity? How does this situation differ from just shaking our hands and say that frame is gonna be stationary by just pure deal? There is always a possibility that some other observer will appear claiming that he has the isotropic speed of light and no one can tell him he is wrong. And that is exactly what the principle of relativity is all about. Everybody has the right to claim being in a stationary frame. So that is it for this video. Thank you for watching. And I would also like to thank people who newly supported me on buymecoffee.com. It's Emplichta, Arthur, Keith, and Levis with five coffees. Thanks people very much for this support. It really means a lot for me. So thank you again. By the way, do you know the real reason why Einstein gave up ether? Maybe you can watch this video to find out. I see you there.